What is up everybody? This is Brian, the Toyota guy over here at Fred Anderson Toyota in Asheville, North Carolina. And uh, today I wanna to talk about the uh, Toyota Venza. But uh, before I really get into that, I just wanna say a, a huge shout out, a huge thank you to every single person that is watching this video right now, um, who's watching my uh, most recent videos, especially, uh, and everybody else that's been kinda of hanging out with my channel uh, for the past uh, two or three years that I've had it. Um, more specifically, uh, I've not been a constant uploader here on YouTube. It's been kind of, you know, a steady drip every now and then where if I've got the time and I've got the thought process, I'll jump outside, grab some car keys and talk about a car for a few minutes. But uh, the last couple of videos specifically with the uh, RAV4 video and then uh, talking about Toyota's allocation system, um, those two videos have exploded and it's, it's just super impressive because uh, I don't have any video editing skills on these. It's basically just 20 minutes of me ranting and you guys are listening to most of it. So I really appreciate that. Um, I'm hoping that, you know, coming from somebody who works at a Toyota dealership, uh, selling cars uh, and has been doing so for a few years now is also a car guy. I can hopefully give you a different perspective on some of these vehicles that you're looking at um, without getting too car sales mini and all that kind of crap. Um, so again, thank you. I think my uh, RAV4 video is like somehow over like 50,000 views now, which is incredible because it's only been up for about a month or so. And then my one I just posted last week about allocations has the last I checked already hit 25,000 in like, I don't even think it's been a week. So I am extremely humbled um, and I could not again uh, appreciate you guys uh, enough uh, for watching that. I'm at the point now where YouTube does actually pay me a little bit of AdSense, which is great because uh, every little bit always helps, right? Uh, but more importantly, I want to talk about the Toyota Venza today. So really why I want to talk about this is, A, I don't think it gets talked about enough. Um, this uh, Venza, this platform has been out for a few years now, uh, really since the 2019 and 2020 era when they uh, revamped the RAV4 body style. And there are so many people every single day that I talk to that aren't even aware uh, of what the freaking Venza is. Uh, or that it exists or anything about it whatsoever. It's almost like every single time I talk to somebody about these cars, it's the first time they've ever heard of it. Unless it's one of the few people that have like done the research and are going specifically for one of these. So, and you know, here we are, I'm, I'm working at the Toyota dealership. This is my only hybrid SUV that I have on ground. And it's been here for like a week or so. And I think that's a problem, not a problem necessarily with, um, well, maybe it is kind of with Toyota because we're just not really talking about this car enough. But everybody is looking for RAV4 hybrids very clearly with my last video. Uh, that's what a lot of eyeballs are looking at. Um, but I don't think enough people are looking at the Venza. And if I'm 100% honest with you, if I'm spending my money on either one of these two cars, for my needs at least, I like the Venza a whole lot more. So let's go ahead and flip the camera around and I'll kind of talk about uh, what I like about it and why I think you should look into it as well. All right, so I'll go ahead and just start right here. You can see this is a 2023 Venza. This one is a limited. Um, as far as the packages that it has, you can see it's got some of the distributor and Southeast Toyota, you know, port related stuff that's on here. Um, and beyond that, it's just got the uh, Ruby Flare Pearl as a special color. So basically everything we're gonna be looking at on this car is gonna be uh, standard equipment for the uh, limited Venza. Um, you can see here uh, MSRP on this car is 46. Um, we do have an addendum with a hybrid adjustment and the uh, dealer accessory package there. So our total price on it is 48714. So now let's talk about the actual car itself. So this is it. Um, Ruby Flare Pearl is obviously one of my favorite colors for these. Uh, and I forget the name of the interior on this. I think it's like the, I know it's their gray. I don't know, they've got so many different colors in the grays. Maybe I should probably know that before I make my video. But uh, specifically what I like about these is like the RAV4 hybrid, uh, which this is basically built off of, the uh, Lexus NX200 and the RAV4 and the RAV4 hybrid all basically share the same architecture here. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, even wheelbase is identical. Now fuel economy on the Venza is like one or two points less. Uh, RAV4 is average about 40. And if I'm not mistaken, the Venza is pretty much average around 38 to 39 miles per gallon. So you take a small dip there on uh, fuel economy. Um, and technically with the way this car is sculpted and shaped, there's not as much room on the inside. Uh, one of the things I talked about that I like a lot about the uh, RAV4 hybrids is that they do have so much room for the uh, class SUV that they're in as far as like headroom, legroom, cargo space, stuff like that. And technically on every single dimension here, cargo room, uh, headroom, legroom, technically uh, this SUV has a little bit less. 
But uh, from my experience driving these things, selling these things, it's not enough that it bothers me. Uh, I imagine if somebody's looking for the absolute best when it comes to uh, cargo dimensions and all that stuff, you know, cubic feet on paper, then go with the RAV4. But specifically what I like about this is Venzas are hybrid only. They've always been that way with this generation. Um, even on their base model trim, it's always a hybrid. And again, because it's off the RAV4 platform, you can expect it's all gonna be all wheel drive as well. So there's no confusion on getting a front wheel drive, whether you need it or not. Um, so you get basically RAV4 level or near RAV4 hybrid level uh, fuel economy and performance, but in a way better, more dressed up package here when it comes to uh, both the sound deadening materials, the styling, um, the interior, and all these little details is just what I love about these. You know, this car has been out now for a few years, and I still don't think there's enough of these really running around that you'll see in Walmart parking lots where I don't think you're gonna get tired of looking at this car. Like, I love my RAV4s, don't get me wrong, but if you go into any you know, grocery store, Walmart parking lot, you're gonna see like probably 30 of them um, versus the Venza, you know, most people might not see one of these even for a day. So if you wanna have something that's a little bit more exclusive that is probably gonna age well, um, I'm a huge fan of these. When it comes to the styling, um, I love the fact that the Venzas have always had kind of like that more swoopy, I don't know if you'd call it more sporty or more luxurious kind of styling, uh, just with more aggressive lines, like with the tapering off of the back end here, which I'll talk about when it comes to storage room. But more than anything, I just think, especially when you look at what was going on in 2019 and 2020 for uh, Toyota styling, they were just kind of starting to revamp their cars, like the Camry, the RAV4, later on the Highlander. And I think they really came out with a banger here. I love the uh, the rear tail lights. Uh, if we had uh, lower lighting, if it was nighttime, you'd basically see the LED lights go all the way across the back there, uh, which are wraparound, um, both when it's the lights and the, the brake lights, which I think looks great. Um, I love the way that the bumper lights are integrated as well. You can see down here on both sides right here is the reverse light as well as your, uh, I think it's the turn signals or maybe it's just reflectors there. Don't remember, but I think it is turn signals down here. Um, but I just, I love the way things are kind of separated. I love the way it looks, especially at nighttime, uh, which this video is not gonna do it justice, but I think those taillights look great. And then same thing on the front end. So you get that same, you know, almost like wraparound look with the uh, LED headlights here. So you can see here with the limited, it's got these nice eyebrows, if you wanna call them that, uh, as far as the daytime running light strips there. And I just like how it's kind of integrated with the grill, where you get that same kind of like connected line all the way across from driver to passenger side there um gorgeous car and then much like on the rear maybe it's just got like the symmetry of things you do have these uh, fog lights here that are separated uh and down below and of course led as well uh this one being limited you can tell just from looking at it on both sides uh we've got the 360 camera panoramic view monitors toyota calls it as well as the uh parking sensors on all the bumpers there so all the stuff you'd expect to have there technology wise um, but really, if you just look at this car, I think it's just kind of an age, a timeless look uh, that's just going to age really well. I like the wheels. Uh, now, I will point out, this is one thing that I do bring up when I'm comparing these two cars. If you look at the way this is set up, obviously, you've got a 19-inch uh, wheel here versus, uh, and you can get 19s on the RAV4s, but a lot of them will have like a 17 or an 18-inch wheel. But the main thing is here, um, this does not have any, or really rare, amounts of uh, plastic cladding. RAV4s have it all the way around the fenders, all the way down the bumpers, front and rear. Um, you can see here, we've got it on the bottom of the bumpers, bottom of the door sills, kind of in the normal spots, but there is nothing here on the fenders. Now, the way these are uh, built, you know, I don't think there's gonna be any real damage over time when it comes to like paint chipping and stuff like that on the fenders. However, if you're more of like the outdoorsy person and you know you're gonna be splashing around in, uh, you know, mud or, I don't know, stuff like that. Um, you could technically do more damage uh, from paint, uh, from mud and stuff like that with this car just because it doesn't have the plastic cladding. You can see this one does not have any of the mud guards or anything on it as well. Um, so if you are looking at something that's a little bit more rugged, um, I do recommend the RAV4 for that. But if you're saying, hey, 95% of the time I'm on paved roads, then something like the Venza is gonna be totally fine. But I do think that what you gain out of not having that plastic cladding is a freaking gorgeous looking car. Uh, not having that plastic cladding, I think just really kind of moves this car a little bit more upscale. Um, even though it's still a Toyota, I mean, there's a ton of Lexus vibes going on with this car. And really, if you compare it with a Lexus NX200, it has more in common with that 
than it actually does with the RAV4 hybrid. So as we kind of open it up, and I'll start from the, the cargo area and move my way forward. Of course, power tailgate, and I'm pretty sure even the LE, LE might have a manual one. But as we look back here, um, this is the one of the main disadvantages of the Venza. So if you're looking for maximum cargo room, um, the RAV4 is gonna have more room than the Venza all day long. Um, you can see this one does have the JBL stereo, um, but if I'm not mistaken, I do believe the floor here, the load floor, uh, sits up a little bit taller than the RAV4. And because it's got this really gorgeous, like tapered uh, hatchback area here, where it's got the sloped back end, you lose a little bit of that boxy uh, storage room like you would have in the RAV4s. You, know, you can see there's actually one right over here. You can just kind of tell how much more squared off the, uh, the back is uh, compared to this one where it's a lot more uh, angular. So you do lose a little bit of that roof height um, for that. It's a little bit more of a shallow cargo area as well. I think the width is pretty much identical. And just like in the uh, RAV4, you can still fold the seat down and it's a pretty much a flat area. I mean, there's a little bit of an angle there, but there's no major like humps or any interruptions between uh, the rear area and the front. So, you know, I really think again, for most people, unless you've got like a large family and you're cramming this full of stuff, I think for most people on most trips, this is gonna still gonna be more than enough when it comes to the storage situation. But kind of just going into some of those like minor details and some of the touches that I think just kind of separate the Venza. And I'll bring up these several times, but uh, this is one of the few Toyotas that I've been in that actually pays attention to stuff like having these aluminum, um, I don't know if you call these door sill protectors or whatever, but they're here on the bumper, they're here on the uh, sides. And even just looking at the little pull here for the uh, rear cargo where the spare tire area would be, um, this is a really nice leather pull. Uh, fit fairly comfortably in the back here. Um, just like the RAV4, you do have air vents and phone chargers back here. If I'm not mistaken, the bottom half of this plastic is almost like pulled right out of the RAV4, really. But if you just, again, look back here, there is hardly any use of plastic. Like, of course, there's plastic here on the center console. You know, there's plastic inside the door cups and right here, you know, where the grab handle is. And, of course, in the lower half of the door. But all of this, this is, you know... Toyota is like soft text or it's basically their leather feel. And this is kind of like a soft touch material as well. Kind of meant to feel like uh, leather. You can see it's got really nice stitching. And then of course this gorgeous, I guess it'd be like a balsam wood. Now, like on all cars, it's fake. This is basically plastic. But when it comes to the look and feel of kind of the fake wood stuff, I love this gray interior with the perforated leather with the balsam wood or whatever that kind of wood is. Um, accents here on the interior, especially the fact that it's got the uh, light gray and the dark gray. I think it's just a great look. And even for a rear passenger, um, I still think it's comfortable. I'll flip the camera around. So this is me sitting in here. And again, I'm, I'll go ahead and sit as, as far up as I can. There's still a decent amount of headroom. I'd say there's probably maybe two inches or so between my head and the roof, maybe three if I were to max it out. Um, but I still feel like it's tons of headroom. Uh, these seats do recline. So you can see you can still lay these back. So even if I do lean it back, which is not a ton, but if I lean it back, there's a lot more headroom now, probably four inches, maybe five inches, give or take. I actually, I'm a man, let's be honest, it's probably three and a half inches. <laughs> but anywho, um, I think there's plenty of uh, headroom. Again, the RAV4 has more. RAV4 has more headroom, the RAV4 has more legroom, RAV4 has more 
cargo room. So you're definitely taking a small compromise to have a little bit of a nicer car. But again, I just think it's totally worth it. So now let's go ahead and head up to the front seat. So up here is uh, where I think the magic happens. Now again, this one is a limited, and these limiteds are now pretty well specced up compared to the older ones, uh, where there was a few more packages that you'd have to get to have certain things included. Uh, one of the big upgrades, and I believe this happened in 2023, was they did upgrade the screen here to basically mirror what they've done with the uh, RAV4s, where you've got the wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto here. It's got the same kind of um, aspect ratio as what you'd have on the Tundra, where it's a little bit bigger here. I don't have my phone set up, so I can't really use the maps on here. Um, it does have Drive Connect instead of built-in navigation. And again, I've talked about that in other videos. I don't really think it's that great, but it works well if you want to pay for the service. Um, but more than anything, it's just got a nice flow on the screen. I like having the uh, the buttons here on the left. Um, the only buttons physically that are here is there is an audio power button here uh, to turn on and off the music, and there is still a manual volume control here so they don't have the knob anymore like they used to in the older ones but you do still have buttons here as well as buttons on the steering wheel so i'm happy to see that um, now looking at the hvac controls i've talked about this a lot with other cars um, they do still have physical ac controls all the way through here so you still have of course auto climate which naturally is dual zone there uh, but everything is a button now these aren't clicky buttons like they are in the rav4 um, there is a little bit of that like piano black as you can see there's some of my fingerprints already getting on there uh, but what is nice about it is everything is fairly responsive you can you know here it gives me a pretty good uh, indicator of what's going on uh, with the ac unit as i'm kind of moving things around um, but just kind of looking at this whole setup here this is just one of those areas where i just i love the attention to detail and this is one of the reasons why i just i love these venzas and love talking about them is if you just look at how like intentional the styling is in here, I love, especially if you look at it from this angle, this, I don't even know what shape you'd call this, but it's almost like two parentheses here where you've got the, this, the entertainment here is nicely framed. You know, it's got this uh, symmetry to everything. Yeah, uh, I guess it's kind of like, you know, it's all ge geometric, I guess is what I'm looking for. And if you just look at how that comes down, you've got more of that fake wood here. Of course, the same fake wood here in the doors. And then there's really good, nice bronze accents. There's bronze stitching here. There's a little bit of bronze right here on this strip. Uh, God, it just, it looks so good. Uh, cup holders here. I just like how everything here is just nice and recessed in. Even this has lots of soft touch on it as well. So again, like I was saying in the back, there's just not a whole lot of plastic on this stuff. I mean, this is meant to feel a little bit like touching glass uh, versus the hard plasticky buttons. Um, so it gives you that kind of, you know, luxurious uh, feel there. I even just like the way, and it's a little bit odd how it sticks out, but there is this nice uh, power button that sticks out right here. But again, I just kind of like the placement of it because it doesn't really want to crowd it in over here. Uh, but you can see down below there, we finally have USB-C ports all around, as well as a wireless phone charging pad. Now, I would point out that that wireless phone charging pad is a little small. I'm not sure if my S23 Ultra would fit in there, if you've got a larger iPhone 15 Max, something like that, if that would fit in there as well. So obviously, as phones get bigger over time, that might be a problem, but I'm not a huge fan of wireless charging in the car anyway. But I just love the look. I love, again, more use of aluminum. You've got the soft touch here, as well as the uh, kind of leatherette up here. Uh, and just overall the shape of the dashboard. I just, I love the way the air vents are integrated. It just looks very modern. It looks very much like a Lexus or a Mercedes. Uh, looking down here where the heated and ventilated uh, seats are, um, those are nice and easy, nice tactile buttons as well. So again, you're not having to use a touch screen, but I also just love that they're kind of like a hideaway feature. So this uh, arm, uh, arm rest center console does move around a little bit. So if you just don't want to see them or don't want to have them bumped, you can just move that forward and it's more comfortable or you can get easy access to them. Now you point that out because some people, uh, you know, maybe don't know where these are if they don't have a great demo uh, on the car. Uh, but like the RAV4, I think you've got really good storage here um, in the center console. It's a nice deep pocket there. You know, this is a sheet of paper that's been folded up a few times. You can see it's got tons of room there. There is still a uh, bullet style, a 12 volt plug there if you want to run more typical um you know car accessories these are obviously for the cup holders if you've got shorter drinks you want to fit in there uh, and then of course you've got the tray itself if you want to uh you know organize your your items and have some pens or whatever there uh, but i just i love the setup here again these seats just look so good i'm actually going to jump out 
and show you. So I just think it's a way more high quality chair than what typically comes in, honestly, a, a, most Toyotas. Just looking at the stitching, the fabric is nice and soft. Again, all this is, you know, pretty much a fake leather, a vegan leather. It's that soft tex that Toyota calls it. But again, I love the stitching in the seats. Of course, the Limited has the perforations for the ventilated seats. Uh, as expected, you would have power seats with a memory option. Uh, but this is also, and these are the two things that I'm pretty sure, minus maybe the Grand Highlander and the Sequoia nowadays, was the first Toyota in forever, if not ever, to have a power folding mirrors. And this is, I think, the big deal uh, for a lot of people is you do have a power adjustable uh, tilt and telescoping steering wheel. And I think for a lot of people that are shopping for something like this, um, that's going to matter a ton because I can't tell you how many people, you know, like having the memory seating, but are often annoyed that you have to reach down for the lever and move the steering wheel around. But having this right here and being able to have full range of the steering wheel and being able to move things around so conveniently means a lot, especially when you pair that up with the uh, memory seating where once you get out, like a lot of Lexuses and high-end cars, this steering wheel collapse out of the way and the seat will move back to make it a lot easier to get in and out of the car. Um, so awesome, especially if you've got like two people driving the car. Uh, my wife and I love having a feature like that in one of our cars that has the uh, the powered adjustable steering wheel there uh, as we can both just get in, hit our settings and everything basically goes to where we want it to be. Uh, now talking about technology in this car, this is another thing that I'm pretty happy about, especially at the limited level here. As you can see here, we do have the digital rear view mirror, which is one of my favorite features in any new car. And Toyotas are getting really good with putting this in a lot of their vehicles, but it just gives the opportunity to have a better visibility out of the rear hatchback area. If you've got this car loaded full of stuff and you don't want to, you know, look out the blind spots and, you know, have to peek out through the hole in the glass and everything there. So that's a really quality tech feature that I like. Um, they've also upgraded um, on the limited model at least, and I still think you have a better screen on the XLEs and LEs, but you can see we've not now have a full digital display here uh, for your speed. Now there's not a whole lot of configurability here. There's still only a little bit of like trip info and stuff like that that you can move around. Um, but it is nice to have this nice full color screen on here now with the digital speed front and center. And I'm sure you can go into the settings. Most of these have some adjustments when it comes to, you know, what you can adjust when it comes to what you're looking at. This was kind of, I think the GR Corolla was one of the first ones that had this type of screen. Yeah, there's your lane centering, your lane guides and everything. So a little bit of control that you can do on that. Like all hybrids, there's no tachometer. It just has the little needle there that tells you what you're doing. Um, but more importantly, um, they finally now have the heads up display on the Venza. I don't think I'm going to be able to get this thing to show up in camera. It's pretty much impossible to get that to work. Oh, well, we can kind of see it there. There's a weird refresh rate. Yeah, you can kind of see it right there at that angle, but you do have a really nice heads up display that's built into the dashboard that comes standard on these limiteds now. And especially when you're using Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, that's one of my favorite features because not only do you have your maps and everything here on the screen, but you're getting all of your turn-by-turn uh, -turn directions up there uh, in front of you, as well as looking at uh, what speed you're going, uh, the traffic cameras, where it, or the traffic road sign recognition, where it'll tell you uh, what the last posted speed limit was. All that can show up there on the screen or on the heads-up display on the hood. Uh, so it makes it really easy to um, drive and navigate when you're on a road trip. And then, of course, I have to talk about the radio. The Limiteds do have the JBL stereo in here. Um, I think the regular stereo is okay. You just don't have a whole lot of uh, clarity and soundscape, and there's not a ton of bass. Sounds okay, but when you've got the JBL in here, I think it does make a massive difference on the overall sound output, the bass levels, the surround sound feel. So also nice to have in something like this, especially as you're going down the road. I don't know if you can tell, but I mean, I, I work right next to a highway, and the sound deadening in here is so much better than the RAV4s, where you don't really hear much of any of the buzziness of the engine cutting on and off. Uh, there's been semi trucks going by with Jake brakes that I don't think are going to come through on the video at all, just because of how much better the sound deadening and sound isolation is in here. So when you combat that or combine that with the JBL stereo, I think it's a great uh, driving experience going down the road. All right, so that is pretty much the conclusion of my uh, my rant and my passion on why I like these Toyota Venzas. Um, again, I think if you're looking for a uh, Toyota RAV4 hybrid. I would highly consider putting this on your shopping list. I mean, this one, as you saw, fully loaded. Well, maybe not fully loaded. I think you're still, like this one doesn't have the the weird stargaze roof that you can get, which I would pass on, honestly. It's cool, but it's gimmicky and also expensive. But this one on the top end trim, at least, you know, MSRP is for around 46 to $47,000. 
And yeah, it's a lot more than like a limited RAV4 hybrid, but I think those max out around like the 44 range. So it's really not a whole lot more. So even if you get this in like an XLE, you still get the leather, you still get the heated seats. Um, you can also get in the LE if you want to have cloth and still have some of the nicer refinements and the better styling and stuff like that. So they do have several different price points for these, but uh, they're not making a ton of these. They never have, that's why there's not a ton of these on the road. But I have also noticed that while they don't make a ton of these, they don't sell near as quickly as the RAV4 hybrids. Again, we have zero RAV4 hybrids on our lot right now out of a total of like, I think 40 or 60 or so that are like in the process of getting built for us. And yet we have, I think two Venzas in our system total. And one of them is sitting here and it's still available. So I think that's uh, probably, uh, I think that's gonna kind of make the point on maybe just why there's not as many people looking at these. Um, I'm gonna hopefully take some time to uh, do a video on the Toyota Crown, which I think is even worse when it comes to, um, I guess the advertising and getting the word out for that car. Uh, hands down, I would have a Venza all day long over a Crown, and that's just me. Um, and if I was uh, budgeting for one, I really like what the Venza offers more than the RAV4. Again, unless you're looking for like maximum space, maximum fuel economy, uh, and a little bit more you know ruggedness there. I just I love the quality of these. I just love the attention to detail on it. Um, so hopefully this video was helpful. Um, if you've got more questions about the car specifically, or if there's anything that I've missed or overlooked, feel free to let me know in the comment section. I've been trying to pay attention there and answer as many questions as I can. So as always, thanks so much for your time and have a great day.